Welcome to Raychem's series of training videos from the Electrical Products Division. This tape will show a laboratory installation of a 15 kV heat shrinkable trifurcating transition splice for three conductor paper insulated lead covered or varnished cambric lead covered cables to three single conductor extruded dielectric power cable. Complete written instructions are included with each splice kit. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before installing your splice. To make the splice, you will need the proper cable preparation tools and a clean burning propane gas torch. The recommended torches are Raychem's FH2629 self-igniting torch and the FH2616A1, which is a light portable propane torch. For your own safety, Please pay attention to the following precautions before beginning the installation. Failure to follow these warnings could cause oxygen depletion, fire, explosion, or electrical hazard resulting in serious injuries. First, make sure the area you are working in has good ventilation. Check all torch connections for leaks before lighting. This product is covered by a material safety data sheet. Before installing any electrical accessory, read and follow the safety requirements and the written instructions. In addition, be sure to follow the safety instructions established by your own organization. The laboratory demonstration that follows is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedures. In this program, we will be splicing a 15 kV three-conductor paper-insulated lead-covered cable to three 15 kV single-conductor extruded dielectric copper tape-shielded power cables. To begin the installation, verify your kit selection and prepare the cables as outlined in the written instructions supplied in the kit. Begin by preparing the paper cables first. To install the oil barrier system, Begin by marking the paper insulation, starting from the cable end, using the dimensions given in the installation instructions. Next, remove the printed backing strip from one side of the long strip of yellow stress relief mastic, otherwise known as SRM. Then roll the SRM up with the paper side facing out. This makes it easier to apply and prevents the material from sticking to itself. While removing the remaining backing strip, tightly wrap one half-lapped layer of SRM at the end of each phase, up to the insulation mark, stretching it to half of its original width. Be sure to wrap the SRM in the same direction as the insulation papers. Repeat this step for the remaining phases. Now, place the clear oil barrier tubes over each phase, but it to the lead sheath cutback. Using a reduced flame, shrink the oil barrier tubes in place, starting at the lead sheath cutback. Move the torch between the phase conductors, being careful not to nick the tubes with the end of the torch. Inspect the installed oil barrier tubes for a smooth, wrinkle-free surface. If needed, reheat to smooth any wrinkled areas. If you have belted cables, discard the mesh and continue with the next step. For screened power cables, install the one inch copper mesh supplied in each kit. Fold the mesh in half lengthwise and wind it around each phase shield as close as possible to the lead sheath cutback. Cut off the excess and carefully prepare the lead sheath using a clean blade to ensure better bonding during soldering. To complete, solder the copper mesh to the lead sheath. Now you are ready to install your black conductive tubes. Position each tube from the cable end according to the dimensions given in the installation instructions. Shrink in place starting at the end of the cable moving towards the lead sheath cutback. Be sure to move the torch evenly around each phase to ensure proper shrinkage. Using an approved solvent, clean the exposed oil barrier tubes between the conductive tubes and the lead sheath cutback. 
Next, assemble the SRM insert perpendicularly and position between the phases as close to the lead cutback as possible. Trim the insert to extend only one-eighth of an inch beyond each phase, being careful not to damage the oil barrier tubes. Abrade and clean the lead sheath and mark it at one and one-half inch from the lead sheath cutback. At this point, gently heat the SRM insert and adjacent oil barrier tubes for a proper oil seal. To install the oil seal, again stretch a long strip of stress relief mastic to one half of its original width. Tightly wrap the SRM so it covers the area from the mark on the lead sheath to the outer edge of the SRM insert. Four to six strips of SRM should be used to build the oil seal to an appropriate diameter. The finished SRM diameter should not exceed that of the breakout installed in the next step. Position the conductive breakout and shrink into place, starting at the fingers and working toward the body. Continue to apply heat until the breakout has a smooth, uniform surface. Now you are ready to prepare the poly cables. Abrade the insulation, if necessary, to remove any embedded semicon. Then, clean the insulation and poly cable jackets for a minimum of 30 inches. First, position the sealing breakout with the fingers pointed away from the center of the splice. Then, place one set of nested tubes over each cleaned poly cable. You'll need to measure your connector to determine what your insulation cutback is per the instructions. Then, remove the insulation from each phase. Install a center blocked connector on each phase and deburr any sharp edges. Crimp your connector. Clean the insulation and connector areas of each phase using an approved solvent. Next, install the stress relief mastic. Begin wrapping the SRM between the connector and the insulation. As you wrap, keep the SRM stretched to one half of its original width and be sure that you fill in the gaps on both sides of the connector. When you heat shrink the first tube into place, the SRM will melt, fuse to itself, and eliminate these gaps. Continue wrapping the SRM around the connector until it is slightly larger than the outside diameter of the insulation. Be sure to overlap the cable insulation by three quarters of an inch on the paper side and by a quarter of an inch on the poly side. If the connector diameter is larger than the insulation diameter, apply only two half-lap layers of SRM over the entire connector. Next, you will apply the diagonally cut SRM at the edges of the semicon cutback. To do this, lay the point of the SRM on the insulation and against the edge of the semicon cutback. Then stretch the SRM to one half of its original width and wrap it until it is the same thickness as the semicon. Overlap and taper the SRM onto both the insulation and the semicon by one quarter of an inch. Repeat this procedure on the other semicon edges and discard the excess SRM. Now you are ready to install the internal tubings. To ease the installation, first apply DCC grease over the SRM Center the black stress control tube over the completed connector area, equally overlapping the poly cable semicon and the paper cable conductive tube. This will prevent sticking of the SRM as you complete the other two phases using the procedure demonstrated on the first conductor. When all three black stress control tubes are in place, shrink them together using a medium flame. Begin by adjusting your torch to achieve a 12-inch bushy flame. Then, starting at the center, work the outer 3 to 4 inches of the flame around the tubes using a smooth brushing motion. Once the center is completely shrunk, slowly move the torch toward one end of the tubes while holding it in a 40-degree angle. This preheats the tubes and forces air out of it to assure a smooth, void-free interface. 
After finishing the first side, return to the center of the tubes and continue heating the other side using the same procedure. Once both sides are completed, post heat the entire length of the tubes to achieve a smooth surface profile. Be sure to check the installed tubes using a gloved hand for even wall thickness and reheat any wrinkled areas. Center the red insulating tubes and shrink into place using the same procedure as the black stress control tubes. Again, be sure to check the surface of the tubes with a gloved hand. At both ends of the red insulating tubes, apply the red internal sealant over the cable semicon, building it up to the level of the red insulating tube. This sealant will prevent moisture from entering the splice through a damaged cable jacket outside of the splice area. Next, position the black-red dual-layer tubes and shrink into place using the same method as mentioned previously. Be sure to check the tubes for even shrinkage before moving to the next step. After shrinking the dual-layer tubes, position the black reinforcing tubes over the connector area and shrink in place. For the poly side, there are several methods of connecting the ground braid depending on the cable shielding type. For copper tape shielded cables, flare one end of the ground braid and place it onto the metallic tape, butt it up to the red sealant. Attach the braid to the shield by placing two wraps of the spring clamp over the braid. Fold the braid back over the spring clamp wraps. Continue to wrap the remaining clamp over the braid and tighten the clamp by twisting it in the direction it is wrapped. Secure with copper foil tape. For drain wire or unishield cables, first pigtail the shield wires together. Then, crimp the ground braid to the pigtail using the connector included in the splice kit. For lead sheath cables, solder the ground braid onto the lead sheath and deburr any sharp points. For jacketed concentric neutral cables, pigtail the neutral wires together and crimp them to the ground braid using an appropriate connector. Once the braids are attached to the poly side of the joint, lay the braids across the splice tubes and solder to the lead sheath. Be sure to deburr any sharp points. Now we are ready to apply the shielding mesh. Starting at the poly side, apply a half lap layer of shielding mesh across the splice and tie off or solder to the lead sheath. Next, a braid and solvent clean the cable jackets or lead sheath on both sides of the splice for eight inches. Then move the non-conductive sealing breakout boot into place and shrink starting at the fingers and working toward the center of the splice. This will prevent moisture from entering the splice between the single conductor cables. To ensure a good seal to the outer jacket of the splice, apply one to two wraps of red sealant over the body of the sealing boot. We will now install the outer wraparound sleeve. After taping over all sharp points, remove the backing from the wraparound sleeve and center it over the splice. Slide the metal channel and clips in place and shrink beginning at the center and working towards each end. After the sleeve is completely shrunk, continue to heat the entire length for approximately 30 seconds, concentrating on the metal channel area. This completes your 15 kV trifurcating transition splice. Remember to let the splice cool before moving it or placing the cable in service. By following the written instructions and the information contained in this program, you can be confident that you are installing a durable watertight splice. Some key points to remember when installing a transition splice are, be sure to follow all safety requirements prior to installing any cable accessory. Follow proper cable preparation techniques and clean all surfaces using an approved solvent. Abrade and clean the lead surface before applying the oil seal. Be sure to fill in the gaps between the connector and insulation cutback when installing the stress relief mastic. Check all heat shrink tubes for even wall thickness, wrinkles, and flat spots using a gloved hand. 
And finally, abrade and clean the cable jackets to achieve a good moisture seal. If you have any questions regarding the installation of Raycam's 15, 25, or 35 KV trifurcating transition splices, please contact your local Raychem representative or call 1-800-327-6996.